welcome back to episode 39, 39 of Off the Wall. I'm your host, Bobby, joined by Matt and Mello. What's up, boys? Doing pretty good. And nearing the end of summer, pains me to say that, but I'm a fall guy, so I'm all for it. Don't even say anything, Mello, about the weather. Please. I mean, well, I, I yeah. mean, I mean, it, 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 yeah, I mean, listen, in Southern California, it's beautiful all year round. So uh, we don't get fall or winter. We do a little bit. But um, you asked how I was doing. I'm still riding high on that Tati suspension. Still funny to me, but we're not talking. We're, we're going to touch on him a little bit, but not too much. But uh, I'm doing great. Dodgers you know. first to 80 games. No surprise. 80 wins. I'm sorry. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Just continue to do your thing. No problem. October, what about Bobby? How are you? How are you today? How are you feeling? Um, I feel a lot better today. We are recording on Thursday night. So I'm coming off a walk-off Grand Slam from Josh Donaldson on Wednesday night, which was pretty pretty cool. They um, seemed like they were going to lose again after Chapman melt, melted down in uh, the 10th inning. Josh Donaldson came up clutch. It was crazy. It was a great win for the Yankees, much needed. But now they're losing again currently as we're recording. But uh, we're not going to talk about that right now because the game's not over. Yeah, after yesterday, you never know. But a Rollis Chapman yeah, melted not. again? Are you serious? Yeah, no, he's... not the Rollis Chapman. <laughs> he's always consistent. Yeah, um, I don't really know what to say about him anymore. He was doing good for a while. I don't know if you guys noticed or uh, saw that at all. But he had like nine straight up scoreless um, appearances. So a lot of people are ripping Boone for putting him in a, in a high leverage situation. But I mean, he's had nine straight great, perfect, basically perfect appearances. He has to put him high leverage at some point. Yeah. So I don't hate that move. But um... believe it or not, throwing hard, if you're throwing that, the ball that hard, chances are you're going to have some accuracy issues once in a while. So. Yeah, I mean, it kind of comes with the territory of yeah. his style of game, but it was brutal. Yeah, we have a guy like that too. His name is Craig Kimbrell. Throws yeah. high velocity and can't locate a damn thing. <laughs> That's funny because, like, I mean, it's weird. I mean, we could kind of dive into this. Actually, it wasn't really planned, but it's weird how short, how it's so rare for a reliever to have a very long prime. There's very few that really have like 10 years of pure dominance. Yeah, unless your name is Mariano Rivera. Exactly. Like Chapman, obviously Chapman and Kimbrough are probably like two of the greatest closers of like this generation. But it's nothing compared to Mariano's dominance or like a guy like Trevor Hoffman, someone like that. It's very weird how um, that happens. All relief pitchers. I don't know. And when you think about it, it should be, in theory, it should be an easier job than a starting pitcher. You're not in near as many innings. Sure, yeah. it's more high pressure, but still, you're not throwing near as many pitches. There's less opportunities to screw up, and there are starting pitchers who dominate their whole career, Max Scherzer, Justin Verlander, just to Clayton Kernel, obviously, yeah. just to name a few who dominate our era. But like you said, it's weird for relievers. Very rare. Like, a guy who comes to mind, at least, um, I mean, Adam Adovino, he was he was never really great. And then he had those few breakout seasons in, or maybe even, like, two, three breakout seasons in Colorado where he was lights out. And then he kind of, like, faded away again. And that was really it. It's a very, very weird thing to think about. So it seems like there's guys like that all the time where, just a couple seasons, flash in the pan, and then that's it. No, Andrew Miller. Yeah, him too. At like 2013, 14. He had a historic postseason mm-hmm. with the Indians at the time. Okay, don't shoot me down. Um, <laughs> um, he had a dominant postseason. Sure, he got overused at the end, and the Cubs figured him out, but yeah, they don't last long. Yeah, and another guy, okay. Good uh, connection here. Dylan Batances. You guys remember him on the Yankees? He was, oh, good. man. He was yeah. really he good. retired. And he just retired, yeah. He looked like he was going to be the next big thing. 
he was like not obviously Mariano, but like he he was just this dominant back end closer for the Yankees or setup man. And he, I think he was thirty four. I think it said that he retired. So damn, your relievers have it tough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no one can live up to Mariano. Oh God, here we go to <laughs> Yankee again. Well, I oh, I, I mean well, that. Uh, <laughs> That's so, not Yankees. I, I know, I know. That's not Yankees. That, that I'm just kidding. <laughs> Mariano, oh my God, Mariano! About it. Like, like, you could come on. We could talk about your career if you want. Mariano, he's the greatest of all time. Enter Sandman. He is, and it's still the greatest is. closer song of all time. Mets fans gotta relax. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> that's why when I made that list, I was hesitant to even put that in the top five. And then I was surprised a lot of people said Gagne, which I didn't even, because apparently everyone's a Dodger hater who follows around the diamond. So I didn't think Gagne's name was even going to be mentioned. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, good, good for them. But yeah, they got to relax with that song. Yeah. It's great. I think it's good. But um, yeah, they got to relax. Very recency bias. But um, Yeah, for a guy... Oh, For a guy who was being called Ed Luz Diaz last season, <laughs> I you need to chill a little bit with uh, Grace thinks and sliced bread here, Edwin Diaz coming everybody, in. Everybody to, comes to back to Earth. But also to his credit, this is one of the greatest relieving seasons we've seen in a very long time. So season's not over, but right now it's pretty dominant. So shout out to Edwin Diaz. I like your song. I think it's nice. we need to I think we need to get a relief pitcher on here on the podcast. We can ask them about that. Okay. Hey, um, so, Mariano. No, yeah, yeah. We'll, <laughs> uh, we'll we'll take him. Eric Gagne. Any? Yeah, you know what? Anyone. We'll get both of them at the same time. Yeah. So Mariano can if show me just... how to throw his uh, his cutter, and uh, I can learn how to throw the changeup from Eric Gagne. And then, yeah. If we're naming our team's best closer of all time, I mean, Brad Lidge, if you want to come on here, <laughs> go ahead. Oh, I might have some things to ask you, but, you know, eh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. All right. Now let's dive into the episode. So, first thing. Okay. This has kind of been eating at me. We did an emergency podcast episode last week to talk about the Tatis news. And, um, I had a little bit of a realization take. I don't really know what you want to call it, but I saved it for the episode. I told you guys it's highly anticipated. I hope I'm not letting you down, but Fernando Tatis's career can be saved and his legacy can be saved. And I still think that there's a chance um, that he could be a Hall of Famer. I mean, when you have to... when you have David Ortiz endorsing well, and backing Fernando Tatis Jr., I mean, I know that's not what you guys you were going with this, but yeah, I think there's a world where that can happen. But this is a conversation that me and my dad had, and I think I might be able to convince you guys. And I don't think his reputation and his reputation can be saved. Also, he's what 23 years old right now, right? He'll be. I assume his age 24 season next year when he comes back. What PED user, steroid user, whatever, ever got caught this early in their career or in their this young age? I don't think anyone. So what if Tatis has 16 great Hall of Fame years from age 24 to age 40 without failing another test? Can this just be a reset button on his career? And he, if he never fails another test and he has a Hall of Fame career basically starting next year, why shouldn't he be a Hall of Famer? Maybe the case is there, like, stats-wise, why shouldn't he be a Hall of Famer? But, like, there's that case, like, Barry Bonds. The steroids not doing all, all that for him 100%. Like, it does take baseball skill to still hit the ball. I can shoot myself up with steroids, still not putting up Barry Bonds numbers out there in a major league game. Uh, I don't know. I think it's an interesting take. What I would say to that, though, is like how many 
players at this age do test positive. Like hardly yeah. any, really. Yeah, I would say none. And That's the why thing this is. is though, oh, no. Well, no, no. why is he taking it then? Obviously, obviously you're taking it to get better. But a lot of these players that have tested positive before, like they're older guys, they're take, taking it helps with uh, recovery and whatnot. So I don't yeah, know. Ringworm. I don't want to spend too much time on this anymore, but yeah, he had ringworm. That's why he took it. Dude. Well, recovery from ringworm, I guess so. So yeah, that is speedy recovery. But um, yeah, and I also think with the progression of the um more modern or more new school um voters maybe coming in because like twenty years from now things will be different. I think that Tatis, if he continues his play like he did and was on that Hall of Fame pace, I think he'll be a Hall of Famer. Mello, what do you think before you wrap uh, it up? I, I, can, I can buy into that. You completely took my point away what I was going to say before you mentioned like the new, the newer, younger voters that are going to start having these opportunities to vote these guys in. Because the point I was going to say, and I'm so glad you guys brought up Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds had a Hall of Fame career before the steroids right. and he didn't get in. So why would it be the other way? Okay. Where Tatis got caught in the beginning yeah. and let's just say he continues to have a hall of fame career after the steroids. Yeah. Why, why is, why does he get in? Because he did it from a young age and stopped. Yeah. And then why doesn't bonds get in? But yeah, I, I think, I think that could happen. I wouldn't be surprised in okay. 15, 17 seasons. He retires, and then in yeah. another five years, he gets in, has a Hall of Fame career. I wouldn't be surprised. Okay. Yeah, I thought of that. I didn't know if it was too hot of a take, but I think, like, actually explaining it, I think it makes sense. But that's just me. I think but, the biggest thing, like, you brought up about uh, the younger voters, I think that's a huge piece because literally everybody, for the most part, in our baseball media circle from around the diamond – and people we know from that and whatnot. From what I took in, everybody that Bond should be a Hall of Famer. And so if it's going to be the people of our age, then moving up to be the voters, it definitely would make a lot of sense if I felt the temperature of the room correctly and saying that we feel different about it than uh, wow. most of the voters now. Yeah, no, I think you nailed it. But yeah, no, I just wanted to bring that up because we didn't, I didn't get a chance to say it last episode. But uh, anyway, moving on from Tatis because that's over with. He also didn't show up to Padres Stadium today. But uh, Yeah, so and they, and they uh, canceled his bobblehead night. And San Diego, if you need help throwing those bobbleheads into the ocean, I will gladly drive down to San Diego and help you do that. <laughs> All right. Mello. You went to the Angels game yesterday, Wednesday night? Yes. Wednesday uh, during the day, whatever it was? Yes, yes. How was that? Explain it. Or that was your second uh, Angels game this year, Second right? Angels game this year. I, I'm not turning just before everybody gets excited. I'm not turning. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm still a Dodger fan. Um, it was a Wednesday afternoon. I was off of board. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to the Angel game. Why not? I'm going to use my hard-earned money that I get from the Dodgers and go to the Angel game. Makes totally sense. makes sense. Um, there was nobody there. Let me start off by saying that. Who did they play? Uh, the Seattle Mariners. Okay. Matt and I are our house money first place team. <laughs> Seattle hey, Mariners. Hey, they're making a comeback here. They're <laughs> yes, they are. Second place. <laughs> yes, they are. Um, I, I still had a great time. We all, I showed you guys and we all saw it. Shohei Otani went five, four for five. <laughs> and I actually saw him in a home run, and they still got their asses kicked. So that was funny and embarrassing to see. But um, I actually got a quick little story. So the game was over. And like I mentioned, there was nobody there. So I had the freedom to just walk around. And I had a pretty good seat originally, but I was like, you know what? I don't come to Angel Stadium very often. I'm going to go explore the stadium. Why not? So the game's over. And I'm sitting in the left field bleachers. Now, Angel Stadium, the Dodger Stadium is very different. I'm sure you guys have seen it on TV, but the bullpens are like in front. They're behind. Once you get past the wall in left field, the bullpens are right there. And then behind that are the seats. So you have a great view 
of what the bullpen guys are saying, especially when there's like a hundred people in the building, you can hear everything. So what they're chewing, what they're doing, what are they talking about? Their farts. Yeah. Farts, everything, what, what they're going to do after. <laughs> so um, you get, to, and then you get to watch them warm up, which is awesome. And if you're lucky enough, you can get a Luis Castillo autograph. Not like I did because he didn't sign mine. But anyway, um, <laughs> game was over. There was like a couple people from the Seattle Mariners were throwing baseballs into the crowd. So I brought my glove, me being a fan. I was like, hey, give me one. Obviously, they didn't give me one. So then both teams are out. The bullpen manager or one of one of the pitching coaches for the Angels comes by and he's grabbing his bag and getting ready to head out. There's a little kid next to me that asks him for a baseball. And he was so nice. Like he said, like, like, sorry, kid. Like, I think we got rid of all the balls. And he actually did because, like, all the bags were out. They were just kind of, like, throwing away the trash and stuff. So then I say, hey, can I get a ball? He sees my hat. And I had my Dodger blue hat on. And he told me, dude, you're a Dodger fan. What are you even doing here? Dodgers are not in town today. I was like, oh, really? So then I said, well, if we're going to do that, the Dodgers are having a much better season than you guys are. And then he told me, now you're really not getting a ball. See ya. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, okay, what does my hat have to do with this? I'm a baseball fan. I want to go see a game. You should be, the angels should be on their hands and knees praising me that I even took the time to go see them. You wasted your time. Yes. Took me a four, 35 minute drive without traffic to get there. Give me a baseball. Give me a ball. <laughs> but no, I, the balls were flying in Anaheim, though. It was like four home runs yesterday. Poor Shohei, man. Get him out. For five, four home runs, home run, triple, loss. <laughs> Ridiculous. But um, yeah, did you uh, get any food at Angel Stadium? I remember yeah. last time you uh, complained about the hot dog situation they had in Anaheim. Yeah, so I got so I got the last time I was there, I, I wasted six bucks on a disgusting hot dog. That was worse. Um, I got the regular food that I did last time. I got like a double burger and stuff. Very delicious, no complaints. Um, I tried to muster up the courage to buy a hot dog, but I couldn't because I had such a bad experience last time. I couldn't do it. I was telling myself, well, you can get a, you can get some fries, you can get a soda with it. I just couldn't, I couldn't muster up the courage to get the hot dog again. Sorry. I love my Dodger dogs. Stay loyal. <laughs> yes. Speaking of um, staying loyal. Aaron Judge? No. I oh. no. Well, hopefully. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I don't want to say no. But um, all right, we'll stick with you. Go back to your uh, team. Dodgers. Let's talk about our your good friend because me and Matt weren't a part of this. David <laughs> Vasse. He was in Milwaukee going down the famous slide in the outfield. Goes down and at the end absolutely destroys his arm and fractures his ribs, breaks his wrist. The vi- the video went viral when <laughs> I mean, the broadcast was talking about it. They were just dying laughing. And then it just frames to uh, Dave, David Vasse. Hi, guys, with his, <laughs> with his uh, cast. I mean, that was amazing. I hope he's okay. He is okay, it seems. Yeah, he but, is uh, okay. He's, he's, he's has a very good – he's taking it like a champ. Yeah. Being a good sport about it. But listen, I was one of those people that – I wanted to go down that slide. And after seeing what Vasse did to himself yesterday, I don't want to do it anymore. But, I didn't even think that could happen to you. Yeah, no, but did you see he went down it twice? Yeah, that the I didn't know. Time, he was the fine. first time, he, it was perfectly fine. But the second time, it looked like he went down so much faster somehow. I don't know how he got so much more speed the second time. He just slammed into the wall. Poor guy. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why he went the second time. Yeah, I have no idea. I don't know if it was for content, but he he was. If you, obviously you guys are not listening to the Dodger stuff out here, but he was raving about that for three days that he was going to do it. 
Yeah. So he started uh, telling he started telling everybody on Monday when they got it, like, hey guys, I'm gonna do the slide on Wednesday. I'm gonna go down the slide. But get well soon. He's in good spirits. I sent him a message last night. He appreciated it. But he said he's fine. Um <laughs> Uh, he got flowers from and a sign from the mascot of the Brewers today, <laughs> and um, he was very appreciative and in, in kind of more serious of Justin Turner and David Price were helping him out because you know when he came into the locker room these guys were trying to get ready for a ball game and meanwhile they got to go perform you know the, it turned the clubhouse turns into the emergency room as they're trying to attend to David Vasse but. But apparently He's, he ended up going to the hospital. He did, he? yeah, and he came back. Yeah, and then like a, <laughs> worked that yeah. game. That's the heart of a Dodger right there. That's what we do. We hurt ourselves, but we get right back up and do our job. Yeah. Definition yeah. of a Dodger right there. Well, I've never heard uh, L.A. described as a <laughs> uh, hard hat, oh. lunch bell uh, city before. But <laughs> Yes. Square I don't know. Him. My question is just – so. He went down a lot faster the second time. Is it that what you're saying? It. it looks like it. So, okay, I didn't know if it was just he should have went feet first, like when he came out at the end, and you're supposed to like stop yourself quick, or like when he came out the first time, it was slow that it wasn't an issue, or it kind of just it looked like the second time he kind of like twit he got twisted. It looked like yeah, as yeah, he was coming down. and then he just totally slammed into that. Uh, the protective piece there, and I was like, "Okay, well, I didn't know that this was such a dangerous slide. No, anybody who gets to go on it, but, but I mean, when he did that, I don't know. I feel one, like if you just feet first, if you went feet first, you just shatter an ankle if you're going that, fast and yeah. probably screw up your knee too. So, yeah, should go head first. Hey, <laughs> hey might end up paralyzed then." Yeah. But, <laughs> do you guys know you, you know they have to sign a bunch of papers and stuff like For in what? case to go safety. down the flat yes yep like because like there was because they because it was a, yeah it was a like the dodgers put it out on tiktok of like you know like of david like they're following him as he was going up the slide and up the stairs there's a part of it that shows him signing a bunch of papers and he had no idea that i could potentially lose my life in the next couple minutes but <laughs> I'd be scared. I mean, like I'm, I'm, I always think the worst. So I'm afraid that as I'm going down, I'm just going to completely go over and just fall to the bleachers and that's it. But huh. I'd still go on it now. It'd be I mean, I mean, if, I all three, a, if all three of us were all together, listing. yeah. If all three of us were together, I think I'd muster up the courage and go. All right. That's fair. Don't push me though. I'll, you won't, it won't be good. You're coming with me if you're going to try and push me. <laughs> all right um so you were talking about your dodgers always if you get hurt you come back up but one dodger who isn't coming oh, back shit. up is um <laughs> walker bueller out for the season season ending surgery which might have happened already i think i don't know if it didn't i forget when he said i don't know but whatever um yeah walker bueller out for the year he's been out sent- has he did he pitch this year he pitched all the way, I think, until June. Oh, really? It just seems so long ago. I know. But, um, yeah, so he's officially out for the year, which is a tough blow for the Dodgers. But, I mean, you could always make the argument we haven't had him since June. But still, just to have that piece come back, that important piece, he would have been a huge, uh, huge help down the stretch. But it's not the case. Tough blow for the Dodgers. Yeah, it it was it was a tough blow. You know, everybody, you know, the reason why the Dodgers didn't trade for a starting pitcher at the deadline, because they thought, well, okay, maybe Walker Bueller will come back. Um, Dustin May is supposed to come back. We'll get some of our pieces back. I just I'm not surprised. I'm not shocked, but I mean, you just said it, like we've been able to win games without him. We've, we're getting career years out of Tony Gonsolin and Tyler Anderson. And you know what? If there's some magic in the air, just going to run with it. Going to yeah. run with it. And we're going to need them now to step up even more. Yeah, that's it. And Dustin May, is he back yet? 
Or no, is he still in AAA? He's going to make his uh, start on Saturday cool. against the Marlins. Nice. But, At yeah, that's, that'll be huge for them. And then along with the guys that you said already, I mean, they'll be they'll survive. It just would have been better, obviously, with Walker. But, I think um, he brings his most value in the postseason, too. Like, just having the experience of having played in the postseason before. Like, not that Gonsolin and – like, Gonsolin started two World Series games, I believe, but – he didn't pitch very much. He it was like an opener situation. So I think he just Bueller really would bring a lot to the locker room in that yeah. case, leadership and whatnot, having been there. So yeah. Yeah, it's all right. But um yeah, another breaking news ish kind of a slow week around baseball, but Michael Harris, Braves extended him. <laughs> on another Braves team friendly deal. What was it? Nine years for se- or eight years for 72 million, I think. I believe. I, I think so. I think it was eight years. Yeah. Yeah. I forget if it was eight for not, but yes. Um, having great season so far. And again, I mean, he's young. It's a risk because you don't know if he's going to continue to play this way. But it seems like this Braves model of locking up these players early, long term on team friendly deals, it's working for them. Um, yeah, that's just another guy that the Braves are just adding to their core, guaranteeing to stay in Atlanta for the next close to the next decade. So Braves just keep doing their thing somehow. Yeah, I think they're setting the motto of like setting, showing the example of how franchises be building up their squads, not necessarily these mega deals. Uh, Like for Bryce Harper, his second really for 13 years. And by the end is going to probably be a shell of himself most likely, but being able to sign these guys, bring them up through the organization for some of them, like obviously Matt Olson, they didn't, but as soon as they acquire him, as soon as they find out this guy, hey, he's going to be a guy, offer him some for contract that's reasonable. Like, it's going to be, hey, that's a lot of money for, uh, I don't know how old Michael Harris is, Probably 20s, early 20s, I would guess. Maybe? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you offer a guy $80 million to to play however many years, yeah. eight years, eight, yeah. he's not, he's, you have to be, Really confident in yourself to not take that deal. And just for the record, he's 21, which is just insane. 21. Jeez. <laughs> so I just, I saw this thing too. 81 days, or what day was this? 83 days ago, Michael Harris was playing in double A and then he signed a 17, $72 million contract. Wow. 80, 83 days later, which is kind of unreal, but good for him. It, yeah. Good for him. And it's like dangling a little carrot over somebody like, hey, you know, take it. Mm-hmm. But um, he's so young that this contract will be up and he can easily go get another one. Yeah. When it's all said and done for more. But um, so this is what the, the price you pay for Freddie Freeman not being on your team. You just lock up everybody else. I guess so. I guess that's how it works. You're selling your soul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give up Freddie Freeman, but we'll lock everyone else now. Yeah. But realistically, they're not – this – um, what's the word I'm looking for? I mean, this situation that the Braves are, like, setting up here, I mean, that they have set up with all these guys locked up, all these young superstars, basically, Acuna, Austin Riley, Ozzy Albies, now Michael Harris, I'm probably forgetting someone – Soroka, I don't know all those guys, but Olson, Olson, yes, Olson. That's what I was thinking of. But like, why wouldn't you want to go to the Braves right now as a free agent? Like, this is such that's a great situation. There are not many other franchises right now that are better that are in a better place than the Braves right now. And they're <laughs> as much as. As it pains me as they are definitely one of the top run organizations in the league. Like, it, have you seen them miss really on a contract here? No, not that's coming to mind. No. And 
I don't know. Will the Freddie Freeman contract for the Dodgers look bad at the end of it? Eh, maybe. Maybe it'll look a little bad. But maybe they dodged a bullet there, per se. But I don't know. I think they're managing their squad very well. So Yeah. And yeah. Then, oh, sorry. Real quick, the real quick. Freddie Freeman thing. As long as the Dodgers get a ring out of it, they won the contract. I don't know if you were going to say that, but. No, but I mean, that, that's true. I'll, I'll scream to the mountaintops if that happens. But um, I would correct me but, but if I'm wrong, but I don't think Dansby's got paid yet, no? No, he's a free so, agent. So what's, after... what's he going to get? Yeah, I don't know. This is says he's free agent after the season. Is he going to fall for the carrot too from the Braves? Or is he going to be willing to go take another meeting somewhere else? I don't know. I wonder. What if the uh, What if the Braves go out and get Trey Turner? We'll get Dan's, we'll get Dansby Swanson. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I mean, hey, D- Trey Turner says he wants to go back east, which that's not a good sign. He actually said that. But they all, everyone. I knows. know they all said that. It's the other way. Everybody wants to come out west. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, wasn't that the big thing with with uh, Scherzer that he wasn't he gonna money talks. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it's it's a lot easier when Scott Boris is behind you yeah. and has your back. It's a lot easier to get a contract when you have Scott Boris representing you. Yeah. And but then, you would, uh, uh, just one last thing on the Braves, you and Dansby, you would think if they really believed in him, I don't want to be like they, they don't believe in him, but with them offering the contract so young to these other guys, why wouldn't have they done it for Dansby? Or maybe they're looking to get to move on and level up. Like or, you said about Turner, I don't know. Or maybe they have, and Dansby isn't interested in taking a team friendly deal. It could be, yeah. I don't know. He's shown he's really valuable this year. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he doesn't owe the Braves anything either. He's like, I helped you guys win a championship. I've been very good. I don't owe you guys anything. If I want to go walk and get something else, I'm going to do it. I like Dansby. I, I do too. Good guy. To a degree. <laughs> oh, okay. Why? Because he beat the Dodgers. Uh, I mean, just when we play against him, it's, can't rule for the opposite opposition. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Whatever. All right, and then last thing we'll wrap up with. You want to talk about the uh, postseason schedule came out, and with the expanded playoffs postseason this year with the wild card round. The first, yeah, wild card round, three, best out of three. Then it goes into the DS, CS, and World Series. Long, long postseason this year. Going to go into November guaranteed. Yeah, and if um, if the World Series does make it to a game seven, it'll be, uh, MLB will be making history as like the latest it'll ever end in season, which will probably only beat it by like two days, but. Yeah. Still, I mean, like I said, the only let me get this out of the way first. The only reason why it's ending this late is because the season started late due to the lockout. All right. But, um, uh, Bobby, mark your calendars for uh, October seventh because you'll be in the wild card. Uh, Matt, you too. Um, but I mean, you guys, you guys are gonna get in. But to play off baseball, <laughs> yeah, you didn't like that one, huh, Bobby? Yeah, yeah. But um. Yeah, so both of you guys need to mark your calendars for October 7th. But the reason why I wanted to talk about this ske- the schedule, if you guys want to take a look, I know you guys don't have it in front of you, but I'm going to bring it up anyways. Um, if they you gave look, us a warning. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I have it saved on my phone because I love this stuff. So um, <laughs> if you guys look, I don't know why I'm saying that, but between – there's no. have you guys noticed that there's no off day between game five and six of the NL, of the NLCS and the ALCS. Yes. You guys notice that? I knew so that. So that's going to be a horrible scheduling problem if it is the Dodgers and the Mets in the NLCS because you could have a potential game five in New York, and you know they're going to put these teams like at 8 o'clock because, you know, they want to get all their money's worth. Let's just say the game's at 8 o'clock. They're going to have to f- leave. The game will end like at 11, 11.30, probably 12 because games are so damn long. They're going to have to get on a plane, fly all the way back 
to the other side of the West Coast to Los Angeles. Get into the hotel, their house is like at four, five, six in the morning. And then they have to be back at the ballpark in four hours to go play a game. Yep. That's brutal. Yep. And do I forget what you said originally, but that's for games four and five of the DS and five, six in the LCS. Mm. See, I didn't know that. I only saw the championship series. Yeah, it's four and five in the DS too. So that kind of screws like America. The exact the only reason I know that is because I remember Pass and tweeted about it. Oh, okay. Example: Yankees Mariners ALDS. Oh, that's a brutal trip. Seattle hosts Game Four, wins to force a Game Five, and then both teams have to fly from Seattle to New York and pl- play Game Five the next day. That's that's brutal. Yeah, I feel like it's, but it's like most of the scenarios like. Dodgers Braves, Dodgers Mets. Yeah. Either one of those. And then in the West Coast, Yankees Astros, Yankees Mariners. Astros it would isn't be. too bad. But yeah, it's it's definitely better than Seattle. But it's still a cross well, cross country yeah. flight. Yeah. And yeah, games three and seven are on consecutive days of the NLC Damn. of the LCS. Or CS. And Going to the World Series, you, I don't know, you guys, game one of the World Series starts October 28th. That's a Friday. Now, I listen to this one guy on the radio show every day, and he brought up a good point, and I didn't even think about it till he said it, and it's a great point. Do you guys know why they had to push, like, the NLCS and stuff? They had to squish it together? Because they didn't want game one of the World Series on a Sunday. They well, didn't obviously. want, yeah. Okay, good. You guys are starting to realize this. So, you guys know what the Sunday night football game is on o- October 30th. You guys know what it is? It's Green Bay Buffalo. Oi. Do you think, and Major League Baseball was smart to do this, do you really think they wanted to go up against that versus a game one of the World Series? Yeah, that's they tough. would get killed, yes, killed rating wise. That's tough, and it would be a huge focal point. I mean, and, and there's no point in going up against, and even on a Saturday, I, they would get killed by a good college football matchup too, which sucks for the game, but it's kind of just the truth. Yeah. But, and obviously, and not the NFL is going to flaunt that, but the NFL fans are going to flaunt that uh, over Major League Baseball flan- fans. Cause I've seen it a million times, like how, cause the, whatever the, oh uh, yeah, the Hall of Fame game. It killed the mm. ratings of uh, a finals game, the NBA finals game, whatever, and World Series games. And I was like, wow, that's terrible for that a meaningless NFL preseason game killed uh, lots of other sports' yeah. uh, meaningful games. But yeah, it's smart for Major League Baseball, though. Exactly. Yeah, and they, they were smart to schedule it, too, because I'm a Packers fan, and I want to watch that game. And I don't want to, you know, I don't want to have the Dodgers on one screen and the Packers on the other screen. Cause <laughs> so they did that. You know what? We're going to give Melo a bone here. He gets to watch his Packers on Sunday. And then a quick other go. thing about the playoff schedule that the wild card games are all going on on the same. All four, all four wild card series are going on three consecutive days, the seventh, eighth, and ninth. So there's going to be four games on each day from the seventh, eighth. That's a wild card weekend. It's going to be. So baseball has its own wild card weekend. That is great marketing. Yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. That's October 7th, 8th, 9th, which is a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which is going to be pretty cool. There we go. That's just like very exciting. Yeah, just like how they did it during COVID when they had like everybody play on the first couple days. Yeah. Can't watch it though. They'll be on ESPN Plus. Can't watch it. (laughs) Be able to watch it. Do it. MLB does a great job putting these games on TV. Yeah, exactly. I hear the World Series is going to go to Apple TV next year. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Peacock. Peacock. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like Paramount Plus or something. Nobody's oh got that. God. Come on. <laughs> All right. Anything then, else before we wrap this up? No? Yes. Magic number for the Dodgers is 27. Relax. You get it. Your team's good. Hey, your team is Yankees, good too. 
That's the Yankees career, like franchise magic number right there, Bobby. 27. How so. long have you yeah. been? Stuck yeah, on I, that still, one I have 27 for? rings. So I know that's all that matters. <laughs> By the way, okay. one, one last quick thing. No, I'm not dumping on you. Okay. 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 I, I'm, done, I'm done with that for today. Um, <laughs> have you guys seen the Jeter documentary? Yes or no? All of the episodes? No. All of I have them. not seen all well, of them. I haven't, I I haven't seen all of them either. Actually, so. I also don't know if they're all out. I only saw the yeah. first two. They're all out. I only saw the first two. I have them recorded, though. Okay. You I should, plan to. You should finish it because it's yeah. really good. Yeah, I only watched the first two episodes, but it's awesome so far. It's great. Yeah, he doesn't get 10. He's not Jordan. He doesn't get 10 episodes. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you liked it being a Dodger fan. Yeah, or, I did. Or, or I, non-Yankee fan, I mean. Yeah, I did. I think I like, honestly, after watching it, I think I like Jeter more, to be honest with you. That's fair. Because I liked him when he was playing. Yeah. But this just kind of like, you know, Jeter, I like Jeter now. He's really cool. Yeah, he is. I like him. I think it did. Uh, they did well. And then the uh, K, uh, Jeter, K-Rod broadcast that was last sunday right that was uh interesting yeah. but let me tell you about my best friend <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was kind of weird but um yeah i don't know like, that's all i got they're fine yeah bobby's childhood heroes on the screen last week that was yeah. amazing <laughs> exactly exactly a rod and cheater they're my heroes so nice. my best they're best friends yes sure they, they are. should come out and play again <laughs> You know, A-Rod's never gotten uh, called back for Old Timers Day. He's never been invited. Sad. Mm. I mean, he only has one ring out of the group. He was a choke job some years. No, just kidding. No. I-, I think he should get called back. I don't know why. I didn't even There's know There's bad blood between the Yankees and A-Rod. That's kind of why his numbers. Not- well, probably because of the whole steroid thing. But, you know, that fun stuff. All right. Matt, you got anything? Nope. All right. That's it. All right. Well, we'll see you guys next week for episode 40. Peace. All right. See you. See you.